I've been asked by people all over the world to do little messages on things that they want to hear about. I uh, taught one on doctrine here a while back, how, how important doctrine was, and doctrine is very important. I wrote a book on the doctrines of the Bible about 1972 or 3, I believe. And when I was pastoring at New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, I everybody that was a new convert, you know, and someone that was saved recently and was baptized, I had and I taught a class of new converts during a Baptist training course during, in the early, well, like we had like Sunday school on Sunday night, which was Baptist training course. And I taught this book, The Doctrines of the Bible, that time, and every new convert, I asked them to attend this, especially if they wanted to be a teacher. And I have, over the years, just filtered some of these messages in my messages because they're, they are very needful. Doctrines are very needful to God's people. I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit tonight since the world is so confused about Him. By the way, He is, um, he is a person of the Godhead. He is part of the triune God. He is part of the Trinity. Trinity and unity. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Ahad, one. One. There's only one God. We don't have three gods, but we have a triune God. We have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we will talk about that, the Trinity, later. Right now I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit. In the charismatic churches, uh, the Holy Spirit is greatly uh, bragged about, uh, displayed in many ways, they say. But the Holy Spirit said that he would not magnify himself, but he would magnify Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about Jesus Christ, we're going to talk about the Father, and we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit tonight. The Holy Spirit is a real person. Now the word Holy Spirit, the word Spirit is a neuter word in Greek. It's a neuter word in Greek. But a lot of times when it talks about the Holy Spirit, it will use masculine adjectives and pronouns. He's a real person. He's not just an influence. He's real. The scriptures we're going to look at tonight and comment about in Genesis 1 and 2, Genesis 1 and 1 says, Barashith, Bara, Elohim, Eth, Hashemayim, We, Eth, Ha'aretz. In one of the beginnings, or in beginnings, plural, he had created God, the heavens, and the earth. And then in Genesis 2, the second verse, Genesis 1 and 2, Genesis 1 and 2 says, we ha'aretz, hathya tuhu wabuhu, we hoshak el pene tohom, we ruah elohim merpecheth el pene amayim. Now in this second verse it says here, and the earth she had become tohu, a desolation and a waste, formless and void. Tohu wavuhu. And then it says, We show shek, and darkness upon the faces of the Tahom, the deep. Darkness became upon the faces of the deep. And then it says, uh, Ruah, <coughs> We Ruah Elohim. Ruah is spirit. Numa in the New Testament, Ruah in the Old Testament. It says, Ruah Elohim, Spirit God, Meripachath, and that means, uh, that's a, it's feminine, singular, and it is, uh, it's a 
what we call a participle, a continual thing. Holy Spirit suffered over, mourned over, grieved over, upon the faces of the waters, because the earth had become formless and void. And Isaiah 28, or Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 tells us what had happened. The Holy Spirit reconstructed this earth. Reconstructed the earth. He was the the driving force, so to speak, of reconstruction of this earth. Now, let me also say this. You out there that have computers, a computer is a computer. It is a computer as a whole. God is God as a whole. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. This is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit now. A computer has hardware. Hardware, that is a shell it's in. Even your phones are computers. That The, the physical touch of that phone is hardware. The physical expression of God is the Son of God, Jesus. Our Christ, our behavior, our Jehovah that became flesh. Now, in a computer, there is also software. Now, I'm not a computer genius by any means, by the way. I'm pretty much almost illiterate with the computers. I do use them. And you see the websites that are out there and all this stuff. I did it, pretty much. But I'm struggling along with it. People watch me as I put out sermons out there. and They say, boy, you're fast, you're fast. Well, I did it thousands of times. I mean... Only because it's simple little tasks that I do, the editing and whatever, and, and loading them up and all of that. The software is what makes a computer think. We have hardware corresponding to the Son of God, the physical expression of the invisible God, the Bible says. We have the software that is somewhat similar to God the Father. Now, in a computer, we got the thing sitting there with hardware and software. Is it going to work? Is it a computer? No, it's not going to work without power, energy. Without power and energy. So, you, you hook up your computer to a power source. And now you have a working computer. The Holy Spirit is like that divine energy and power source. Dr. J. Lewis Guthrie said in, eternal, in eternity past, God stood as all of the complete energy that brought forth all life and what we might call hardware or material, he brought in the material creation. Bara Sheath, Bara Elohim, Athashamayim, we at the arts. In one of the beginnings, he had created God, and that word God there, Elohim, is in the plural. I mean, the whole Trinity did it. At Hashemayim, first of all, he created the universe, and then he, and then we at the arts. Hashemayim, we at Hashemayim, and then it says, we at Haaretz. He placed the earth in exactly the right place in that universe. Among all the stars that are out there, the earth hangs in exactly the right place. We are sitting on that earth right now. I'm here with the energy that, that's producing the lights in here so you can see this. The camera, the uh, standalone DVD burner, and CD burner and all of this is working together so I can put it into a computer, edit it, and upload it, and download it, and then put it out there on YouTube and on Sermon Audio.
In John 15, 26 and 16, 13, 14, 25 through 27, the Holy Spirit is called a helper. He's also called the Spirit of Truth. In eternity past, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, we find out we have a fallen structure, a destruction of, in the universe of God's creation, and we have angels, fallen angels and fallen spirits called demons. Angels are triune like God. They, have, they are clothed with material, in a material clothing, they are spirit and they are soul. Spirits are spirits. Spirits are unclothed beings, but they are beings. The Holy Spirit of God is unclothed only in, and clothed only in that in the person of Jesus Christ. When we look at Jesus Christ, we see the Father and we see the Holy Spirit manifested before us. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus performed the miracles that he performed in Galilee and Judea by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit energized this creative and uh, reconstructive acts that Jesus performed in miracles. In 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 11, it tells us that truth is revealed through the Holy Spirit. As people like Muhammad, as people like Joseph Smith, Charles Taze Russell, Brigham Young, as, as if they were inspired in what they did, and they were not from the good side, the Holy Spirit will never lead you into error. If Herbert Armstrong or Charles Hayes Russell tells you that God is leading me to do this, it's not God leading them. The Holy Spirit will never lead anybody contrary to the divine and definite word of God and God's revealed will. He will not do that. First Corinthians 12 chapter and verse 11 it text that the Holy Spirit distributed gifts and talents in the early church age. The Holy Spirit distributed gifts and talents and what were they? The apostles? The apostles were inspired of God to preach messages that they did. Evangelists, pastors, the gift of languages, the gift of healings and miracles. They all did this through the power of the Holy Spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit. All the miracles that Jesus did and all the miracles that the apostles did was by the power of the Holy Spirit. And by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church that when the perfect thing had come, and he's talking about the Bible, that which in part shall diminish, that shall in part for it's just like a washing machine goes off, an automatic washing machine. We've got a dishwasher in there going today, and it will do all its stuff, and then it'll turn itself off. Paul telling that church through the, the, the uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit says, These gifts shall cease for themselves, except the gifts of faith, hope, and love, which you have today. Romans 8 and 27 says the Holy Spirit searches the hearts and intercedes in our minds. We come to God many times in prayer and the Holy Spirit helps us to pray to God. And I'm not talking about an unknown tongue, a heavenly language either. I tell you what, in my life sometimes I have been so distressed, especially when my daughter was being abused so much years ago, that I just cried and my heart prayed to God. Mm -hmm. I still do. Sometimes we don't have words, but the Holy Spirit puts our requests before the throne of God. He searches our hearts. 
He intercedes for us. He guards our minds. We guard our minds through the Word of God, through the Holy Spirit of God. Don't ever think that Satan is going to be laid down and leave you alone for the rest of your life. When you're saved, he will start attacking you all the way and the Holy Spirit defends you. Romans 15 and 30, we have the love of the Spirit, the love of God. We love one another. We put up one another because of the gift of the Holy Spirit in that we have the gift of love, agape. Agape. The gift of love. In Ephesians 4 and verse 30, it says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is leading you, when the Holy Spirit is convicting your heart and your mind, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. In Revelation 2 and 7, it repeatedly says there, the Holy Spirit says to the churches through this revelation in His Word. We are studying the second and third chapter of the book of Revelation in, the his, in church history. And it says, He that had ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit does these things. What are some of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit? Do you think the Holy Spirit puts anything evil in your mind or does it cleanse your mind with His Word? Hebrews 9 and 14 says that Christ offered Himself through the eternal Spirit. Hebrews 9 and 14 says Christ offered Himself through the Holy Spirit, the eternal Spirit. Everything that He did on this earth in his earthly ministry, he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. Every miracle. Jesus said that there was a sin against God in that if we sin against the Holy Spirit of God, there is no forgiveness of sins. And how did they do that? When they said that the miracles that Jesus were performing were by the power of Satan. He said, if you say something against the Son of Man, it may be forgiven you, but when you speak against the Spirit of God, it shall never be forgiven in this life or in the next. In Psalm 137, 7 through 10, or 139, 7 through 10, that is, the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Jesus said, if I go away... I will send a comforter or helper to you. If I go and not away, Jesus was physical in that person right there. Right there in their presence, in those people's presence, in the church members' presence. But he said, when I go away, I'll send the Holy Spirit unto you, and he will lead you into all truth. And on the day of Pentecost, the church was not born. On the day of Pentecost, the church was empowered by the comforter of the Holy Spirit. The church was. Each and every person all the way from Adam this way, when they were born again, we have the Spirit of God in us. The Spirit of God, which, that is which raises us from the dead. And Luke, thir and Luke 1 and 35 and Romans 5 and 19, the Holy Spirit is capable of personal contact with us. He's capable of personal contact with you and with me all over the world at the same time. The Holy Spirit is capable of personal contact with you everywhere, whether you in Africa, in China, in Taiwan, New Zealand, Australia, Wales, or Pennsylvania, Nancy. Everywhere. He's with us. All at the same time. And the power of the Holy Spirit, again, is how Jesus did all the miracles that he did. In 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11, and John 14, 26, and 16, 12, and 13, 
The Spirit searches all things and reveals and teaches you all things. Teaches you all things. As we read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit reveals these things to us through His Word. The writers of the New Testament had inspiration of God. Each and every writer in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, by the way, the Old Testament is full of the New Testament. The Old Testament is full of the New Testament. It's all over there. The life of Jesus and everything, it's all in the Old Testament. The redemption, the redeemer, our goel, our kinsman redeemer. It's all through the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit is what gave us the Bible that we have today. The Mormons say that they have an apostle and that apostle is uh, directly led by the Holy Spirit. How can a church that gets God so wrong, how could the Holy Spirit ever lead them? If there's a spirit leading the apostles and the and the Mormon church, it is not the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit will never lead you contrary to revealed truths and doctrines. Some of the works that are ascribed to the Holy Spirit in the Bible basically are creation and restoration in Genesis 1, the first chapter, creation and restoration. In John 15, 26, and Acts 5, 30, and 32, he will bear witness of me, Christ, not himself. He will not magnify himself, but he will bear witness of me, that is Jesus. He's a witness of Christ's life, death, and burial erection, and, and resurrection. Christ's life, death, burial, and resurrection. In John 16, 7, 30, 7, through 11, uh, the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. What leads you to salvation when you hear the Word of God is the Holy Spirit of God, God touching your soul. God is immediately touching your soul. In Titus 3 and 5, John 3, 3 through 5, and 6, 53 through 63, the Holy Spirit renews our minds through His Word. The Holy Spirit renews our life. Uh, he gives us life. We are born of the Spirit. We are born of the Spirit of God. We are born of the Spirit of life. When we're born into this world, we're born with the blood of Adam in us, and that blood is, has an infection of sin in it and death. When we're born of the Spirit of God, we're born of the Spirit of life. And that what marks us for the resurrection and eternal life. In Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, and 2 Corinthians 1, 22. It talks about the, the spirit of promise that is in our lives. It seals us with the Holy Spirit. When we're sealed with the Holy Spirit, we're sealed forever with the Holy Spirit of God unto the redemption of our bodies. Without the Spirit of God, without the Holy Spirit, there is no God. And God placed his existence on the line when he saves you. We have the earnest redemption of the Spirit. We have the earnest down payment in our lives. Earnest money is what it was. Earnest money, when you put money, earnest money down on a car or a house or some property or something, if you don't redeem it, you don't get the earnest money back. God said, I put my Spirit in you, promising that I will redeem you. I promise you with my very existence that I will redeem you. What a promise.
In Romans 8, 16, the Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit in us that we are his. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are his. His possession. In Romans 5 and 5 and 8 and 9 and 1 Corinthians 2, 12 and 6, 19, the Holy Spirit, who is from God, helps us to understand God's Word. It convicts us as we read God's Word. It, that's the Holy Spirit, God working with your spirit. Right there. God is touching you. He's touching you in spirit and in mind. <clears throat> in Ephesians 3.16 it says that, uh, that we are strengthened with the spirit of God and with the power of God when we go through problems. What kind of problems can you go through? As we study in church history, I've got a church history chart back here. There were between 50 and 100 million Christians killed by the Catholic Church and over 270 million Christians killed by Islam. And as these people were dying, the Holy Spirit comforted their spirit, mm -hmm. leading them into eternity. Stephen in the seventh chapter of the book of Acts talks about him preaching. He, he rehearsed the whole history of Israel to these people and saying amen, amen, and amen and all of a sudden he said and you crucified the God of glory and then they began to stone him and they began to bite him with their teeth literally bite him with their teeth like dogs like the hounds of hell and through the Holy Spirit he said I see Jesus I see Jesus and the God of heaven ushered him into eternity. I see Jesus. Every time, every one of us that comes to the point of death in our life, the Holy Spirit welcomes us into God's kingdom. The Holy Spirit today. What does the Holy Spirit do today? Well, he doesn't do miracles like they did in the early church because we don't have to have the word confirmed by miracles and to prove that we are God's men. The Holy Spirit still calls people into the ministry. The Holy Spirit still calls people unto salvation. The Holy Spirit still calls people unto service today and always in this age. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. The Holy Spirit guides us. Whatever we do. You know, I've been a carpenter, a mechanic, electrician. I've done all kinds of stuff in my life. Electronics. And when I'm working on something, and it becomes very difficult, I start praying. I said, Lord, help me to get through this thing. And sometimes I don't think I can do it, but it happens. I make the right decision. I pull the right thing. I do the right thing. And then when I do it, I say, Lord, thank you. Mm -hmm. God wants to be your bosom friend. God wants to lead you through this life, and God... First of all, God wants you to be saved. He wants you, you poor Mormon out there, or a Catholic out there, you're in a religion of hell. If you do exactly what the Catholic Church says for you to do, you will go to hell. If you do what the Mormon Church tells you to do, you're going to go to hell. If you do what the Jehovah's Witnesses tell you, you're going to go to hell. The Buddhist. All of these will lead you to hell. But if you allow the Holy Spirit through His Word to use and allow Him to convict you of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come, and you call upon Him to save your soul because of what Jesus did. 
See, Jesus offered himself through the Holy Spirit. Jesus was raised by the Holy Spirit from the dead. The Bible says that the Father raised him from the dead. The Bible said the Son raised himself from the dead. And the Bible said the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. Now, how did that work out? Because we have a trinity. We have a triune God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The Holy Spirit will never lead you contrary to God's revealed will in his word. Is the Holy Spirit touching your life right now wherever you are in the world? Follow. Follow. He will lead and you follow. Our Father, we send this message out tonight to honor and glorify you and your Son and your Spirit. Help us to glorify you with our lives. Open our minds to your word and our hearts to your touch. Thank you for your Spirit that is working on our hearts right now. You're with us through your eternal Spirit. Please forgive me where I fail you. Please use your word throughout the world wherever it goes. In Jesus' name 